welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about these things, desktop PC power supply units or PSUs. Specifically, I'm going to discuss PSU functionality, modularity, ATX standards and the different kinds of power connectors, PSU power and efficiency ratings, and finally, I'll say something about noise and cooling. PC power supplies convert a mains AC input to low voltage DC. Specifically, most modern PSUs provide 12 volt, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt DC outputs or rails. In addition, they have a 5 volt standby rail that keeps the motherboard powered when the computer's not running and which allows the power button or wake up LAN functionality to boot the computer up. This means that a PC is always consuming electricity unless you turn it off using the switch on the power supply itself or by cutting power at the wall socket. All desktop PC power supplies have a socket for their mains input. However, their output cables may be non-modular, semi-modular or modular. Non-modular power supplies have their output cables permanently wired into the unit. Meanwhile, semi-modular PSUs have the power cables that plug directly into the PC motherboard permanently connected but feature sockets for all other cables. And finally, modular power supplies are those where all cables are plugged into sockets. Without doubt, modular or semi-modular power supplies make desktop PCs easier to neatly build and maintain and remove the need to have unused wiring inside the PC. But when it comes to functionality, it really doesn't matter if you choose a non-modular, semi-modular or modular unit. The modern PC power supply was born in 1995 when Intel first developed its Advanced Technology Extended or ATX motherboard and power supply specifications. These and later revisions defined an ATX power supply to be 150mm wide, 86mm high and 140mm deep. Still today, most full-size desktop PCs have an ATX power supply of this height and width although the depth is often increased. Meanwhile, some smaller PCs, such as this Mini-ITX desktop that I built some years ago, require an SFX or small form factor unit. Other smaller sized desktop power supplies include ATX PS3, Flex ATX, TFX or the thin form factor and CFX or the compact form factor. Mini and other very small desktop computers now also use all manner of non-standardised power supplies that are not fitted in their case. Original ATX power supplies connected to a computer's motherboard using a 20-pin connector that provided 3.3, 5 and 12 volts. An additional 6-pin auxiliary connector was also specified and was included on some power supplies and motherboards to provide further 3.3 and 5 volt connections. In 2000, the ATX 1.0 specification, technically known as ATX 12 volt 1.0, was introduced. This added an additional 4 pin 12 volt motherboard power connector initially required to power Intel's first Pentium processors. In 2003, ATX 2.0 was released which, with many minor revisions, remained the desktop standard until 2022. Most importantly, ATX 2.0 extended the main ATX motherboard power connector from 20 to 24 pins, with the additional pins adding extra 3.3, 5 and 12 volt connections. What all of this means is that today, desktop PCs have two motherboard power connectors. The first is a 24 pin connector that provides 3.35 and 12 volts, although the plug on the power supply cable is normally in a 20 plus 4 configuration that allows the last four pins to be removed so it can still be connected to an older motherboard with a 20 pin connector. 
The other way around, if your power supply only has a 20 pin connector, this can be inserted into a 24 pin motherboard socket. The 20 pin cable will only fit in at one end and will work fine on systems that don't have a high power requirement. The second motherboard power connector is for the CPU, 12 volts only, and has either 4 or 8 pins. Where 8 pins are provided, the socket is also known as the EPS 12 volt connector and is actually a 4 pin connector that's duplicated, so allowing more power to be supplied. On the power cable, usually either a 4 pin 12 volt connector is provided or an 8 pin connector in a 4 plus 4 configuration as this can fit a motherboard with either a 4 pin or an 8 pin socket. Today, the vast majority of PCs only need a 4 pin 12 volt connection. But if you're buying a new power supply, it's worth making sure that it offers an 8 pin EPS just in case you need the extra power in the future. This is particularly important if you plan to fit a high power CPU or to implement overclocking. Over the years, the ATX standards have also specified a number of other connectors. Initially, these were the 4-pin Berg connector, mainly used to power 3.5-inch floppy drives, as well as the 4-pin Molex connector, which used to be used to power most hard drives and optical disks, and sadly remains in use to this day as the general PC power connector. In 2003, the Berg and Molex connectors were joined by the SATA power connector, which today powers most 2.5-inch, 3.5-inch and optical drives. And then, in 2005, 6-pin and 8-pin PCIe power connectors were introduced. PCIe power connectors are used to provide power to PCIe devices and most commonly high-power graphics cards that require more than the 75 watts of power available from a Time16 PCIe slot. A 6-pin PCIe wire, sometimes known as a PEG or PCI Express graphics cable, can provide a graphics card with an additional 75 watts, making 150 watts in total. Meanwhile, an 8-pin PCIe connector can supply an additional 150 watts. Today, it's common for power supplies to have PCIe connectors in a 6 plus 2 configuration, so they can be plugged into either a 6-pin or 8-pin socket. Some high-power graphics cards even require multiple 6 or 8-pin PCIe connectors. With, for example, this MSI GeForce RTX 280 Ti having three 8-pin connectors. In March 2022, Intel released two new ATX power supply specifications. The first was ATX 3.0, which introduced a new 16-pin PCIe power connector called 12V High Power. According to Intel, this was intended to power most, if not all, future PCIe 5.0 desktop add-in cards and can supply up to 600 watts. 12V High Power connectors were soon also included on some very power-hungry graphics cards, such as this Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090. Opinion, however, was divided on whether it was a good idea to pass enough energy to run a small electric fire through one small PCIe connector. And, soon enough, reports began to emerge of 12V High Power connectors on RTX 4090 cards actually melting. It's therefore a relief that the PCI Special Interest Group has now developed a new 12V 2x6 PCIe power connector to replace 12V high power. This will be included in both the ATX 3.1 and PCIe 6.0 specifications and supports 150, 200, 450 and 600 watt power modes. The other new March 2022 specification was ATX 12V only 2.0, a second version of a PSU standard introduced in 2019. As the name suggests, this is a standard for power supplies that only deliver a 12V output, with conversion to lower voltages taking place on the motherboard. For some years, manufacturers including Dell and HP have been using non-standard 12V only power supplies in some systems, 
so all that Intel's doing is introducing some standardization. The benefit of 12 volt only power supplies is that they are more energy efficient, in particular as they reduce power consumption at idle. This may prove increasingly important for businesses facing new governmental regulations. But whether 12 volt only power supplies will enter the consumer and PC builder marketplace remains to be seen. When selecting a power supply, two key considerations are its power and efficiency ratings. The most critical is the power rating, which indicates the maximum power output in watts. However, it's worth noting that some manufacturers, such as Corsair, rate their PSUs based on what they can continuously supply, whilst others list a peak output that cannot be sustained for long periods. And my advice would be to select a unit based on what it can continuously supply. In all circumstances, a power supply should be selected with an output rating that exceeds the maximum that may be required, ideally by 25% or more, as it's best not to run a power supply at close to full load. For a typical business or low to mid-range home PC, a PSU with a continuous power rating of between 300 and 500 watts is usually more than sufficient. Meanwhile, systems with high power graphics cards will probably require a power supply in the 850 to 1200 watt range or even greater. Note that PSUs with high power ratings will only use more power if the PC requires it. So if, for example, you select a 750 watt rather than a 500 watt unit, the electricity used will be virtually identical if your PC actually draws, for example, 200 watts. Several manufacturers provide an online calculator to help choose a suitably rated power supply. Sadly, some of these, like the one from Corsair, have morphed into marketing tools. But the Cooler Master calculator remains very straightforward, whilst the one from Be Quiet nicely shows how PSUs with different ratings will be loaded with selected components. It's important to note that power ratings reflect PSU output, and this gets us to the subject of efficiency. If, for example, a power supply is 70% efficient, to output 200 watts it will need to draw 286 watts from the wall socket. But, if it is 90% efficient, it will only need to draw 222 watts. To assist with power supply selection, since 2004, an efficiency rating system called 80 Plus has been in place. This certifies power supplies into one of six efficiency categories from 80 Plus to 80 Plus Titanium. As we can see, the efficiency in the different categories ranges from 80% up to the mid 90s. And, importantly, efficiency does depend on load. So, it's important not to select a power supply that will be too highly or lowly loaded. As I'm sure you would expect, the most efficient power supplies do cost considerably more. But, for heavy PC users, choosing a more efficient unit may significantly reduce their electricity bill. All desktop PC power supplies include a cooling fan, the quality and operation of which varies considerably. Today, some power supplies even have zero RPM or hybrid modes where the fan does not spin at low or medium loads. Last year, I made two videos about building a quiet PC that includes such a power supply. So, if you consider silence to be golden, you may want to check these out. When it comes to PC cooling, some early ATX power supplies were designed to draw air into the case and to exhaust it across the processor, which at that time was not fitted with its own fan. But these days, power supply airflow works the other way around. In many cases, the power supply is mounted at the top and draws in air from inside the case before exhausting warm air out of the back. In this setup, the PSU usually works in tandem with case fans, which draw air in at the front and exhaust it at the back. 
However, in many modern systems, the PSU is mounted at the bottom, where it draws in air through a base vent and exhausts it out of the back, so separating power supply airflow from the rest of the system. This is better for the power supply, but may significantly reduce airflow around other components if the PC case is not fitted with at least one front and one rear fan. An appropriate power supply is essential for the long-term stable operation of a desktop PC, and it's therefore, if possible, always worth paying a bit more for a high-quality unit. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.